Hello and welcome to Fertile Minds. I'm Dr. Emily Price at TAS IVF and today I'll be talking to you about irregular periods. When determining if a patient cycle is irregular and whether ovulation is occurring, it's important to establish the length of the cycle, the length of the bleeding that the person has, and whether they have any symptoms of ovulation around the middle of the month. Now, a patient may have a cycle that is usually 32 or 33 days long or longer. It's quite common for women to have irregular periods when they first start getting their periods as a teenager. But once reaching adulthood, a cycle that is longer than 35 days or shorter than 26 days would be considered irregular and warrants further investigation. If you do have irregular periods, it's important for us to establish whether that's associated with ovulation or not. We can determine that with some simple investigations, usually involving some blood tests and an ultrasound, as well as some information about your cycle. And with all of that information, we can determine whether some simple treatments, such as ovulation induction are required, or whether more in involved investigations or treatment might be necessary. So for patients who may be experiencing subfertility and irregular periods, IVF is not necessarily required and we may be able to achieve a pregnancy using other medications such as those used for ovulation induction. Those medications are a tablet, they're taken for a few days each month, followed by an ultrasound to determine what's happening in the pelvis with development of an ovulation follicle on the ovary and then conception is attempted spontaneously. One of the most common causes for irregular periods for my patients is polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, which affects one in eight women. For some women, the only sign is irregular periods, but for others, they can have hormonal symptoms such as excess hair growth, uh, some skin changes, or other metabolic symptoms such as problems with um, high insulin or high blood sugar levels. When thinking about patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome and when discussing it with my patients, it's important to take into account the medical and emotional impacts of polycystic ovarian syndrome and the phenotype or the way it presents for each patient is very individual. And so looking at uh, a full array of investigations to determine whether irregular periods is the only symptom and the only symptom that needs treatment or whether there are other impacts that, that my patients are experiencing that are worth addressing as well. Thanks for watching. To stay up to date with all things fertility, be sure to subscribe to our channel.